Hello everyone. This will be the last video for this topic. This video, we will look at the examples on page 12. Before going to the example, let us do a brief recap. For this section, we learn how to calculate the uncertainty of the derived quantities. So for firstly, for expression involving addition and subtraction, the uncertainty of the derived quantity is given by the summation of the actual uncertainties. For multiplication and division, the fractional uncertainty of the derived quantity would be the summation of the fractional uncertainties. Please also take note that the uncertainty, the final uncertainty in the derived quantity is always greater than the uncertainty that you work with at the beginning. So before moving to example, let me illustrate this with a quick test. Area is length times breadth. So if you are given the percentage uncertainty of A, which is 3%, and the percentage uncertainty of the breadth, B, is 2%, what do you think would be the percentage uncertainty of the length L? Well, there's only two possibilities. First possibility, first possibility is you sum it up, 3 plus 2, 5%. Then possibly you might also use 3 minus 2 to get 1%. So which would be the correct one? Let's look at this in greater detail. So since area is length times breadth, therefore, based on what we have learned from the multiplication for, for the, the way we, we handle consequential uncertainty for multiplication, then the fractional uncertainty of A is given by the fractional uncertainty of L plus the fractional uncertainty of B. So since we are interested in the percentage uncertainty of L, we will do this. So ending up with fraction uncertainty of A minus the percentage uncertainty of B. So 3 minus 2 giving us 1%. Another person might be doing it this way. Since area is length times breadth, therefore length is area divided by breadth. So the fractional uncertainty of L will then be given by the fractional uncertainty of A plus the fractional uncertainty of B. For this, this way of working, you end up with 3 plus 2% giving you 5%. Two very different values, 1% or 5%. So which is correct? Note that at the beginning, I told you that you must always remember the final uncertainty must always be greater than the uncertainties that you begin with. So the, therefore the 1% answer is not correct because what you are getting is something that is smaller than the given uncertainties of 3 and 2%. Now this is physically not possible, it doesn't make sense because given more uncertainties, things cannot become more certain. This is impossible. So the, the point that I'm trying to put across here is that if you are finding the uncertainty of a counted value, note that the uncertainty must always be bigger and not smaller. So to, in order for you to not to, to avoid mistakes, then you must always make L the subject because the length L is the uncertainty that you're calculating. So this method is not correct. Always remember to make the quantity the subject first. So with that out of the way, let's look at example 4.2. 4.2, you are given the expression to calculate frequency and you are asked to find the frequency as well as the uncertainty. The values are given here. Before you proceed to find, note that you have to be careful, the, the unit for L is in CM and then here is in meters, so you have to be careful and Newton is, there's already meters inside Newtons so you have to be consistent with your units also take note that there is a minus 3 or standard form here so if you take all this into account, you use this expression and of course your calculator then you get the 
answer of 58.8439 hertz if you if your computer show more than one place by all means you should show all do because at this moment do not round up yet we have yet to find the actual uncertainty to find the actual uncertainty we will again look at this expression and then we follow the rules that we have learned because all this is multiplication and division so you end up with the fractional uncertainty of f is half the fractional uncertainty of the period t there's a half in front because of the square root sign in the same in a similar way there's also a half in front of the fractional uncertainty of m because m is also under the square root sign and finally even if you divide by l you also sum plus the fractional uncertainty of l then you plug in the values your calculator will give you the fractional uncertainty of f note that this number has no units because it is a fraction next you have to do this important step this important step one important step one would convert your fractional uncertainty of f to your actual uncertainty of f and you do this by multiplying your fractional uncertainty with your value of f your 58.8439 hertz this is step one you have to remember to do step one on top of step one there's also another step that you have to remember and that is to round up the actual uncertainty to 1SS, 1SF so this is step 2 you have to round up to 1SF oh, so only when you have done step 1 and step 2 then you can proceed to do some rounding off then you round up your answer for frequency 58.8 something something to the same number of decimal place as your uncertainty which in this case is zero decimal place so the answer that the correct answer that is expected must be 59 plus or minus 1 hertz remember to do step one and step two that is for example 4.2 try to use this to try to remember this when you go through example for, for the next example for the next example uh, you are asked to find the cross-sectional area given the diameter along with the uncertainty to start off with, of course, you must know the expression. In this case, the expression is not given. But assuming, of course, a circular cross-sectional area, then area in terms of diameter would be pi d squared over 4. Using this ex expression you and your calculator, you should be able to get this value either in meters or millimeters. Again, please do not round up yet. Then again, you do the fractional uncertainty uh, expression. So in this case, since it's pi d squared over 4, then you, because of the square, therefore the fractional uncertainty of A is given by two, twice the fractional uncertainty of D, the diameter. Plug in the values, then you get 10%. Again, Step 1, step 1 involving converting the fractional uncertainty to the actual uncertainty of A. And you do that by multiplying 10% to the true value of A. And then step 2, remember to round to 1SF. So is this will be your actual uncertainty of A. Then you can proceed to round this value to the same dp as this value 
So the final expected answer is 3.1 times 10 to the power of so 3.1 plus or minus 0 0.3. If it's in meters, it's times 10 to the power of minus 8. If it's millimeter, it's times time times 10 to the power of minus 2. Note that the that this the front part of the expression, whether it is in millimeter square or meter square, it is the same. Last example, example 4.4. .4. This example also is useful to remind us that when we want to calculate fraction of certainty, it is always important to make the quantity the subject first so as to avoid doing any form of subtraction. Let me illustrate. You are asked to find the mass and its uncertainty given density and the diameter indirectly you need to do subtraction to get this the diameter so how do you proceed to do this so note that for this example it is somewhat a mixture of subtraction as well as multiplication and division so let's do the addition and subtraction first uh, for subtraction 78 minus 35 gives you 43 but recall for subtraction, you also add up the uncertainty. So uncertainty is 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05, giving you 0 0.1 cm. So this is the first part. After you have gotten the uncertainty of the diameter, then you can proceed to calculate the mass. Density is mass over volume. Please don't start doing the fraction uncertainty here because you end up with you might end up you will end up with a negative sign later because you will do some uh, uh, movement you will do some mathematical manipulation so instead of doing that you should be making m the mass the subject of the equation first so mass therefore is density multiplied by volume. Volume of a sphere is 4 pi r cubed. Change it to diameter is this expression. Only when you have gotten this expression, then you can start calculating the value of m. Remember, don't run up yet. And also, after you have gotten this expression, then you can proceed to do the fractional uncertainty calculation. So in this case, it's pretty straightforward. You simply sum up the fractional uncertainty of density plus the plus three times the fractional uncertainty of diameter, as shown here. So after you have tucked in the values, the fractional uncertainty is about three point three six percent. Then you can proceed with step one, which is to convert this percentage uncertainty, this fractional or percentage uncertainty to the actual uncertainty by multiplying by the value of m. Also don't forget step 2 which is to round up to one significant figure and finally you can round up the value of m 12.494 to the same number of decimal place as the uncertainty so it should be 1 dp. So you will get 12.5 plus or minus 0 0.4. That's the end. Thank you and I'll see you in my next topic.